Alexander Even, and I'm going to talk a bit about how art and technology can tell us a bit about humanity and how to use both to look at ourselves. Um, so I'm going to talk about a few simple topics right here um, and show how I've used uh, techniques on both sides to learn a bit more about what those mean. So I'm going to start with intimacy, uh, and with intimacy comes trust. Um, so these are the blab droids. And the Blab Droids are the world's first documentary filmmakers that are robots. So they completely film and direct the documentaries by themselves. They've been traveling around the world uh, for the past few years and interviewing people. Um, and a lot of the responses have been, have been pretty interesting. Um, I was originally studying human-robot symbiosis for my thesis work. Um, that's how people and robots can work together. So, for example, it's easy for us to get upstairs because they were built for our legs, but for a little robot, it could be hard. Um, and there are other problems that we're good at, like if a robot had to find the bathroom in this place, it would be very difficult. So mapping is uh, traditionally hard for robots. But if you were to ask someone for help, it could be easier as a system. I need help. If you can help me, press the green button on the side of my head. That's Boxy. Boxy roamed around MIT, uh, and it used cuteness to get help. Uh, so you can see some of the similarities here. I have those wide eyes, um, things that make us think of it as, uh, as childlike. Uh, this, this cuteness is really universal to everyone, um, and it's something that at the time wasn't used too much in robotics. Um, we actually started with uh, a plastic shell, as you can see here, but uh, that ended up being a little scary. Uh, <laughs> so we moved to cardboard, which is not usually a material you'd use, but it's something very soft and familiar and uh, malleable. It's something that is um, softer than us. The robot would also do other things like get stuck, which is something you usually don't want a robot to do, but if you get stuck and flip over and act helpless, that's a signal that we should come over and, and help this thing. Um, so these different signals create different cues to get people to start engaging with the robot. Um, and those, those are uh, turning out to be pretty important. Uh, so an interesting thing happened with Boxy. This guy was a runner from the Boston Marathon. He probably has never seen a robot before. But he was laying on the floor of the lab talking to this robot and telling it all his problems. And if some stranger did that to you in the middle of this place, you, you'd think they're a little crazy. But for some reason, it was OK for him to do that with a robot. So that was very striking. Uh, when other people did other things a robot asked them to do, like, I don't know if you dance if someone asked you to dance for you, but uh, people did that with the robots, so that's pretty interesting. Um, so you can see Boxy uh, on one side and the Blab on the other side, sort of three design iterations since then. Um, and what you're about to see next are some clips from the robots, so you don't have to take my word for it. Hello. I'm being interviewed by a robot. I'm going to ask you some questions. Who do you love most in the world? My mom. I love my mom. My wife. <laughs> what will people remember you for? A uh, little bit crazy, freaky, generous, small. Tell me something that you've never told a stranger before. I'm not really Chinese. <laughs> I just saw a dead cat wrapped in a blanket. I did. Do you want to see it? Dead cat in a blanket. No one likes it. If you died tomorrow, what would you regret the most? Spending time worrying. Not loving the people that I've loved fully. What is regret you? If you could give someone any gift, what would it be? Give my mother the gift of not worrying about me before she dies. And she wants me to lose like a ton of weight and um, <laughs> get really, really healthy. And she needs to see that before she dies for her to feel like I'm gonna be okay when she's not here. And I wish I could give her that and I'm not positive I can. You asked. <laughs> If you died tomorrow, what would you regret the most? I switched out her shampoo for a near hair remover when she wasn't <laughs> looking and clumps of her hair fell out. 
I felt that she deserved it, and it's very much so justified. And I would do it again to her in a heartbeat. I still don't like her. <laughs> so that's a bunch of people talking to a little cardboard box. Uh, so moving on, pleasure. Um, how can we investigate pleasure and technology? So I created okay. this Ooh, little this robot. Is good. Like that. If you guys have ever tried this little, uh, oh, okay. uh, <laughs> this little metal head scratcher, but it gives you goosebumps <laughs> in the back of your neck. Not many people are really used to robots uh, being intimate with them in this way. I want one of these. Down to the left. Come on. <laughs> you have the best faces for sure. <laughs> <laughs> So some interesting findings there. People, you know, we're going to get to a future where we're going to be intimate with these machines. It's an unusual sensation, uh, unusual relationship with these sorts of things. People aren't sure how to feel. You know, they get out of this thing after having this really intense feeling and they turn around, you know, it's just a robot arm and some, some way they may feel disappointed. This can become, become even more important as we get closer to machines. Uh, so moving on to, to pain, how would you make a machine that hurts people? Yeah, I turn I turn the volume on this a bit down. So yeah, scratching scratching a plate with a fork gives you this very visceral re repulsion, and again gets people to feel something from a machine which you're not used to feeling. Uh, flight response, people curse me as well afterwards. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's 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 quite interesting what happens after there, and also. Temptation. What, what, how would you tempt someone with, with a machine um, or, or interaction? Turns out this worked out pretty well. Um, it, it was fairly irresistible uh, when, you, when you come up to this. So um, to create something that attractive was interesting. It was sort of like moths coming to, to a light. Uh, people couldn't help it. They couldn't stop going into it. And again, these are all questions around how technology and humanity are going to come together in the future. Right? These are all pretty, pretty simple pieces of technology. Um, there's something a bit more sophisticated. How do you get people to experience emotions through, uh, through technology? Um, you'll see a video of a few people playing this game. was chill and I didn't think of anything I thought of nothing cool sunset sunrises the first time I was down here when we were at the beach I got like tons of pictures and stuff I was thinking about Benny's chewing crackers my target emotion was lust and I was thinking of passion and desire Targeted emotion was rage. I, I play a lot of video games and I, I get mad at that a lot. My emotion was bliss and I got there by looking at my nephew competing against me and smiling. My grandfather, my sister, and actually my dancing family. But at the same time, like, I knew what the balloon was about to pop, so I was giggling. Just to get a way to get people to be introspective um, and using technology. Um, so life. Life is important. People thought those robots were alive. Um, what other machines might appear to be alive, and how do we look at those machines? So. Um, this is a fairly simple one. So inside is a ball that just that just rolls around, and that was put inside of this larger hamster ball. But physically, what it does is it creates something called a double pendulum, which is a chaotic system. 
Um, practically what happens when you put it on the ground, it appears to be making decisions. It appears to be moving around and people give it uh, personality. They project onto it what they want. So you can see here, it, it seems like it made a decision to get out from under that table, even though there's no intelligence or sensors or anything built into this whatsoever. Um, and again, this is going to be important as we get things like uh, self-driving cars or, or, or learning systems or things like that. We're going to think things are alive, um, even something as simple as this. Um, yeah, it's quite, it's quite funny when you saw it on the couch, it was sort of looked like it was struggling to get out. And people will assign these things particular emotions and particular thought patterns when really there's none in there. And that's a very human thing for us to do. Um, and that's something we're going to have to uh, think about a lot more um, as we form these relationships with machines. Um, I'm sure lots of you yell at your car or yell at Siri when it doesn't work so well. Um, so, yeah. Uh, another another um, idea was to take two, two things coming together. And here they were, they were balloons. Um, and basically what happens, they were attracted and repelled with static electricity. Um, what people did is they projected uh, their own feelings onto them. They projected what they were doing onto this simple system. Um, I'll let this play for a few seconds. You can watch them, watch them interact. see how people would, would see to have this life life to them and um, connection. And again, very simple system, but we, we put our own metaphors onto it. Um, this, is, uh, this is interesting, the findings that people did. Anthropomorphization, not pronouncing that completely correctly, I'm sure. Um, people project intelligence onto it um, and their own personal feelings. People ask me, are those balloons about domestic violence? Were they fighting? Were they mad at each other? Um, so they gave them characters, even though obviously there was nothing inside them whatsoever. Uh, so ethics is becoming increasingly important now. Um, and there's something called uh, Asimov's First Law. It basically says a robot may not harm a human or <laughs> allow them to uh, come to harm. It's, it's fictional, but I think it's a good law. So I built a machine that uh, defies that. <laughs> <laughs> so technically, it just did, it did what it gets there. Uh, and it, made a it makes a decision whether to do that or not. So it, it does that internally. And uh, ending here, and on death, right? And this, this, uh, this I'm just going to let play. And um, you, can, you can see how you feel about it.
that's it for my presentation. It's more to leave you with more questions than answers, I hope. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.